This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let us rejoice and be glad in it. come before you this morning one more time to say thank you we thank you oh God for your grace your goodness your mercy your favor your loving kindness thank you oh God for looking past our faults and seeing our needs Heavenly Father right now we invite your presence to be with us in this worship experience on today father we desire that you would have your way Father, we ask a blessing on all those that will be participating in today's Women's Day service. Father, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you, oh God, for our first lady. We ask you, oh God, to continue to walk and lead and guide each of them. Father, thank you for bringing us to this moment. Now, we ask your blessings and your anointing upon the speaker, the preacher of the hour today. Oh God, we pray, oh God, that you would touch her. Anoint her from on high. Let her, oh God, preach the adulterated word of Jesus Christ. We pray, oh God, for all those listening today. Give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to each of us as your church. So, Father, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. song this morning is hold to God's unchanging hands. How many know we need to hold on to God's unchanging hands? Let's sing it out like we feel it. Amen.
sisters in Christ. What a priceless privilege it is that we get to serve the one and only true and living God, the creator, the master, the owner, the ruler, and the sustainer of everything in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and the universe. It is a great privilege to be here today. The Father God has chosen each and every one of us to be alive today. So the word of God says that let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. So if you have breath in your body and if you're not a corpse, let's stand up and give all glory, all honor, all praise, all adoration, all appreciation, all thanksgiving to the one and only true and living God who's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. He is our Father, our God, our Lord. I stand before you all today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I do not stand by my own power, but I come not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. And we come today to give glory and honor and praise to the one and only true and living God. We come as kingdom kids, sons and daughters of the Most High God. We come, we are part of a royal priesthood. I just want to let you know, just in case someone calls you out of your name this week, exactly who we are in Christ. In Christ, not within ourselves. We are kingdom kids, sons and daughters of the Most High God is who we are. We are part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people that belong to God is who we are. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do a good work which God planned in advance for us to do. So we honor the Father God today to be one of his chosen ones to stand before his beautiful, blessed, beloved people as we celebrate the beautiful women of Mount Zion and the visitors in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we are setting the atmosphere I just have to tell you what the Holy Spirit told me to do as we're setting the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to move in a mighty way the Word of God told me to tell you lift up your heads O you gates and be lifted up ye ancient doors that the King of glory may come in then they ask the question well who is the King of glory and it says the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory. Then we go on over to Revelation where it says, Worthy are you, Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created, and they have their being. Then Revelation 9 tells us, And they sang a new song, choir, and they said, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And it's with your blood that you purchase God's people from every tribe, nation, people, and language to be a kingdom and priest unto our Father God. So I stand before kingdom kids and I bow before the King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So remember, it's by Isaiah said, the spirit of the Lord is upon us, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, 
knowledge, power, the spirit of the Lord, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now we can move forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit as we welcome our beautiful sister, Sister Teresa May with scripture. Following Sister Teresa May, our beautiful sister, Deacon is Sandra Randall. She will come and the Holy Spirit will lead her in prayer. And then our beautiful sisters that's behind me, the Mount Zion Baptist Church Women's Choir, our beautiful, beloved, blessed sisters, they're going to give us a selection all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you, Father God. God bless you, Dad. Thank you so very much, sir as I honor you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the opportunity to stand before people, God's people, and serve you and serve most of all him while serving one another in Jesus' name. We serve an awesome God, don't we? God is good and worthy to be praised. I ask all that are able-bodied to please stand for the reading of God's word. God laid two scriptures on my heart. Now the first scripture is from Psalms 90, verse 17, which is our theme scripture. The next scripture is Colossians 3, 23 and 24. I'm going to read Colossians 3, 23 and 24 first. And God's word reads as thus, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Now Psalms 90 and 17 reads, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. May God already bless, and it's already blessed, his word to fall upon good soil. Amen. Good morning, church. Let us go into prayer with bowed heads and humble hearts. Lord, I stand here this morning asking you for peace, serenity, discernment, love, understanding. Thanking you for waking us up this morning. Thanking you for clothing us in our right mind. Thanking you for getting us here. Thanking you, Lord, for the beautiful women of Mount Zion. Thanking you, Lord, for just being so good and so kind. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of any sin that we committed or have in our mind to commit. Lord, keep us standing on your solid ground, on that solid rock we stand. Lord, we can't be here. We can't say anything. We can't do anything without you. Lord, teach us to put you first. Stump the devil put you first. Lord, we are living in a mean and evil world, but we know that you have total control, all control. Everything that we do, everything that happens, you are the author of it. You are not the author of confusion. You are the author of a good serenity. And Lord, we are asking to keep in your way so that we can see you one day when we can make it to the other side. It's hard, but Lord, I ask that you walk into the hospitals and the nursing homes and you heal those that are sick, because we know you can, only you can. Lord, we ask that you comfort any bereaved family here today, anybody going through bereavement, Lord. And we ask that you just wrap your arms around them and let them know that you love them. And if they look to you and only you, they will find comfort. Lord, we ask that you continue to look over, watch over, and take care of Sister Jones and her beautiful daughters as they take care of her in this trying time. Lord, I ask that you continue, continue, Lord, to keep our pastor in your arms. Lord, he works so hard striving to keep everything together. 
We know you have him, Lord, because we know that he is your son. He is your child, and you will take care. And, Lord, we ask that you bless the speaker today as she comes to bring the word. We want to say thank you for everything that you have done, Lord, and everything that you are going to do, because we know that in the end we will see a brighter day. Lord, we ask all these blessings in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen.
why we are here today because it's been a week and I want you to know there's been a week but the Father God has allowed each one of us to get here today and we came in the building to give him praise I know the color scheme is black and bling forget come and get these shoes Ashton because they hurt forget about black and bling I would rather have the glory of the Lord forget about the black and the bling because the bling gonna come off this evening when I get home forget about the black and the bling because it's going to fade. That's what it is. I would rather have the glory of the Lord. Astrid, come and get these shoes. I would rather have the glory of the Lord because His glory don't fade. His glory don't fade. So yes, we came, my beautiful sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as daughters of the Most High God. Brothers, we thank God for you all. But today is Women's Day. So we thank God, we come to give him our daddy, we daddy's daughters, and we come to give him the glory and the honor and the praise. So we thank the Father God for our beautiful sisters who came, uh, Reverend Teresa May, Deaconess Sandra Randall, and the beautiful sisters behind us, the Mount Zion Baptist Church choirs, for choir rather, the women's choir, for blessing us with prayer and God's word. My God, in the scriptures. Sisters, got something I need to tell you. Beautiful sisters. It's, it's Women's Day. And sisters, in Jesus' day, Jesus went against the culture. Women were very important to Jesus. And the, very important. Now, the Jewish men would pray. This was their prayer. Lord, thank you for not making me a woman. That's what they prayed. They thought that their animals were more important to them than the women. That's why in some of the cultures still today, the woman walks behind them. But let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus, you know, Jesus went against the grain. What he, he did, he went and he spoke to the woman that had been hooked over for 18 years. A Jewish man speaking to a woman in public was unheard of. And not only did he speak to her, he touched her and he healed her. Let me tell you something beautiful, sister. In a culture that disrespects women, let me tell you something, beautiful sisters. You are special to Father God. You are his beloved daughters. So let me tell you the bees that you are. You are blessed and you are beautiful. Now that other bee they may try to call us, we ain't that. And we ain't claiming that. And we are not broken. We are the beloved of Father God. So remember that you are special. The apple of our Father God's eye. And we thank the Father God for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're moving forward in Jesus' name. Our beautiful sister, our sister Bridget Hill, is going to come in Jesus' name and welcome us. And then our beautiful sister, Sister Wanda Mickens, is going to come with the announcements. And hey, Mom, where's that camera at? Where's the camera? Wait, did it here? Mom, 
you're not here today but let me tell you something beautiful sister you're here in spirit we love you as the first lady of Mount Zion Baptist Church and we thank the Father God for you beautiful lady and you are beautiful and you are blessed and you are beloved and you are healed and God is manifesting his healing power in your life we thank God for you sweetie we miss your presence but we love you honey we thank God for you in Jesus name in that order then we'll have the tribute uh, for Mrs. Goldie Jones by our beautiful sister sister Tammy Gibbs in Jesus name that the glory of the Lord rise among us in Jesus name amen amen I just want you guys to pause for a minute because this train is already rolling so I just want to take a minute to just welcome you first of all I want to thank the Lord for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way and giving me the activity of my limbs because for 22 years I'll tell you I've had rheumatoid arthritis and you probably didn't know but it's okay and just thanking God for allowing me to have that activity of my limbs I am truly blessed I really am <laughs> secondly I want to thank my pastor pastor Jones for giving me this opportunity to stand before you I want to say I hope you felt welcome when you came through the doors, I hope someone possibly gave you a hug, maybe shook your hand, maybe gave you a smile. But just in case, I want to pause for a minute and I want to welcome you. We, the women of Mount Zion, would like to thank you and we would like you to come worship with us since you're already here at this moment. That's my W. E. We hope you get engaged in this service. Go ahead and clap your hands if you felt loved by the Spirit. Go ahead and stomp your feet. Go ahead and say amen. I'm sure it's all right with us. Most of all, it's all right with the Lord. Amen. L, look around. You are among saints and friends who love the Lord. C, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with us. O, Open your hearts, open your minds, and let the Lord come in. M, magnify the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. E, I hope you enjoy the choir as they sing. I hope you enjoy the prayer that will be prayed. I hope you enjoy the word, but most of all, I want you to enjoy Jesus. May God bless you. May God be with you. I love you, thank you, and you are welcome. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord in this place. God is good, amen. And he's so worthy to be praised, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We invite you to check out our church website. That's www.mntzbaptist.org. There you will get all of our church announcements. There you will see that we are under the leadership of the greatest pastor in the world, Reverend Dr. Alfred Jones Jr. and our most amazing First Lady Deaconess Goldie Jones, amen, 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 amen. On our church website, you will see that every Sunday morning that we have our Sunday school at 9 a.m., amen. And just a note right there, effective October the 1st, all Sunday school platforms in, um, in person, Zoom, and audio will be held at 8 45 to 9 45 amen the time is changing 8 45 to 9 45 amen and then on tuesday nights amen tuesday nights at 7 p.m reverend mickens meets with our youth amen 7 p.m for bible study and then come on here for um, at 7 30 where our sons and daughters will bring our bible study via YouTube. Amen. Amen. On our website, you will also see that we have an online giving button. Amen. Amen. Very important. That's where we pay our tithes and our offering. Amen. Amen. I want to pause right here. And if you are celebrating a birthday, happy birthday to you. Sister Gwen Boswell in the back. Amen. She celebrated a birthday. Amen. 
Happy birthday to you, Sister Gwen. Amen. And um, the Grosses, Deacon and Sister Gross, they're celebrating 40 years. 40 years to God be the glory. Amen. 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 And I do believe maybe a month or so ago, the May celebrated an anniversary. Amen. So happy anniversary to you this month. Amen. 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 So we just want anyone that is celebrating, we just want to wish you God's speed. Amen. 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 Our awesome men of God, amen, are, will celebrate their annual day has moved to the third Sunday in November. But men, we are praying for you. We are excited to see what God has in store. Amen. Amen. Our pastor is a very busy pastor. Amen. Here are some of his preaching engagements. Um, he will preach today today at 3 p.m. at the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Fredericksburg, Virginia. All choirs and members, please make sure that you accompany our pastor. Amen. Pastor will also preach this Thursday, September the 28th at 7 p.m. at the Star of Bethlehem Baptist Church. And then he will preach at the Clever Oak Baptist Church in Gold Vane, Virginia on October the 22nd at 2 p.m. Again, all choirs are and members are encouraged to come and support our pastor. Amen. We don't want our pastor to preach and no one there to say amen. Amen. Because he's our angel. Amen. So we want to make sure we are there for him. Our youth announcement, hanging out with Jay. Mentoring Mondays will be every first and third. The next will be October the 2nd. And then our sister circle, amen. Our sister circle will meet again tomorrow at 6.30. So parents, please make sure that you bring all ages of your young ladies out. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have creative and courageous conversations that you don't want to miss, amen. And I promise you, if you come, we're going to have something to eat for you, amen. Amen. Mount Zion. October, we know what October is, right? Our pastor's anniversary, our pastor and our first lady's anniversary, their 49th anniversary, amen. Amen. Our 40, their, I said our, I've been here, their 49th anniversary, amen. We will celebrate them, amen. Come on, give it up for our pastor and our first lady. Come on, give it up for our pastor and our first lady. They deserve everything, amen. We will celebrate them during our 10 a.m. service and more information will come, amen. The Gospel Workshop Experience Scholarship Program Incorporated will take place here October the 7th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. For more information, you can see Deacon Lee, amen. Deacon Lee, let's continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in as well as our bereaved family, amen. We know that God is good and he's able to do all things, amen. Amen. I thank you for your attention. Mount Zion is your church where everybody is somebody. sisters we appreciate your service and how you serve the father god with such a spirit of excellence i'm sorry uh brother beloved wathen montgomery i'm sorry before our dear sister comes sister tammy gibbs uh thank you so much thank you baby thank you um i hope you all are doing well my name is wathen montgomery I stand before you as a dedicated member of both our church family and the Boy Scouts of America. I have proudly served this guiding community for 12 years and have recently embarked on my journey towards achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. I am thrilled to inform you about my upcoming Eagle Scout project, which aims to make a positive impact on our community and would like to extend an invitation to our church congregation to participate. Working with Mr. Jonesy, the project we have chosen is a meditation garden, which involves laying a flower bed and installing an accompanying bench and crucifix. The garden will be located in the back of the church near the Fellowship Hall back door entrance. We are finalizing the date with my Boy Scout leadership and are planning to complete this one weekend task in late October. Please keep an eye out on the church bulletin for a final date. To successfully complete my Eagle Scout project, I am seeking both volunteers and financial contributions. 
Whether you can spare a few hours, lend expertise, or contribute financially, every bit of assistance will propel us closer to achieving our goal. Your generosity will not only benefit our church community, but also help me achieve my lifelong goal of becoming an Eagle Scout. If you're interested in volunteering or donating, please meet me after church in the hallway outside the sanctuary, where I will have more information on paper that I can give to you. You can also connect with our project coordinator, Mr. Jonesy. We will be more than happy to answer any questions you might have and provide you with further details about the project. With your support, we can help create lasting change and foster a sense of unity and service within our community. Thank you in advance for your kind consideration and support. I am honored to be part of such a caring and supportive congregation. Thank you. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, somebody in the house of God. First of all, giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of our lives. And to the greatest pastor in the world, amen, and our wonderful first lady. And the entire Mount Zion church family. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for supporting our 11th annual men ministry charity golf tournament. God blessed us last Saturday with wonderful, wonderful weather. Not only did we play golf, but we fellowship, we had great food, and we had a wonderful time in the Lord. But truly, our blessing came with the proceeds from the golf tournament where we're going to buy coats for those in need in our community. Last year, we bought 218 brand new coats. The word of God tells us what you've done to the least of these, you have done unto me. Amen. To my brothers, to my brothers, including my pastor, who came out and hit a couple of golf balls at the driving range, to those brothers who planned, played, helped set up, donated, and provided the giveaways. And we had one brother that had one of his vendors provided us a $2,500 check to buy coats for kids in our community. Hallelujah, somebody. But I recognize, I recognize that this is Women's Day. Hallelujah. And I told my pastor, I said, you know what? I want to, not only I, but the brothers, we want to openly, openly acknowledge and recognize all the women that played in our golf tournament this year. Amen. This is the first time in 11 years where we had so many women here at Mount Zion and outside of Mount Zion who played in our tournament. But not only the women that came out and played, but those women that got up early on a Saturday morning that came out to help us register everybody, kept me straight, and kept us on board. I want to thank you and those women who donated to the charity event as well. But I truly want to thank Sister Random. Thank you for coordinating with Sister Gloria Yarbrough. Sister Yarbrough is not even a member of this church, but that sister donated over 10 cases of water for our tournament. God be the glory. Now, on behalf of the Men's Fellowship and the greatest pastor in the world, I want to thank everybody for the great turnout and the success of our golf tournament. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Guess what? I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it but love me back. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Good morning and praise the Lord, saints. I have the privilege of giving a tribute to our pastor's wife, and our first lady, Deaconess Goldie Jones. I prayed and asked God, what should I say to pay tribute to our first lady? And this was laid upon my heart. Deaconess Goldie Jones, we pay special tribute to you today on this, our annual Women's Day 2023. On behalf of the women of Mount Zion, we simply want to say thank you to you and thank you to God for you. 
Proverbs 31, 31 says, Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Proverbs 31, 10 says, a wife, is a, no a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Proverbs 31, 25 says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. And then Titus 2, 2 through 4 says, teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they should live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can, then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children. All of these reflect back on our first lady, Sister Goldie Jones. The lyrics of several songs flowed through my mind as I was preparing this tribute that may have also flowed through your mind, Sister Jones, at some point in time during your journey as first lady. He's preparing me for something I can't handle right now. He's making me ready just because he cares. He's providing me with what I need to carry out the next matter in my life. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. You've been so faithful. As I look back over my life, I can see how your love has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, you've never left me alone. But you forgave me, and you kept on blessing me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Because thy compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. How many times must I prove how much I love you? How many ways must my love for you I show? How many times must I rescue you from trouble for you to know just how much I love you? First Lady, thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your service in and out of church. Thank you for your love and your support that you give to our pastor, which allows him to be the greatest pastor. <laughs> Thank you for the love and wisdom that you have poured into our church family. Thank you for being a godly example of a woman of God, as well as a first lady. None of this would have been or would be without God, who has, who None of this would, be, would have been or would be possible without God, who has you in his loving hands. So I end this tribute with a grateful hallelujah to God, who is your source by saying, Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you for being so good to her. Lord, I just want to thank you. 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 I want to thank you for being so good to me. So good to me. Lord, we just want to thank you. 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 We want to thank you for being so good to her. So good to her. You were her bread when she was hungry. 
water when she was thirsty. You've been a bridge over troubled water. And Lord, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for being so good to her. So good to her. We also have a presentation for her. Pastor, you want to accept it in her behalf? Thank you so very much. God bless you, Sister Gibbs. Thank you so very much for that. And I know that if mom was here today, that she would, she would have truly enjoyed that. We thank the Father God for uh, the sacrifices that she's made as a mother, as well as, as a, 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 a pastor's wife. And, and I thank you, beautiful sisters, for the love and the cards and the flowers and all of those things that, uh, that my sisters and I and dad brings home from, from Mount Zion. It's absolutely beautiful. Fall. The word of God says that they, the world, will know that we are Christians, not by the size of the church, not by the size of our home, not by the size of our cars, not by our titles, not by the bling or any of those things. Jesus Christ, where are we? Oh my goodness, we are at a moment of silence for our deceased members, our sister Clarice Ross, our beautiful, Ross rather, our beautiful beloved sister. Uh, we invite you to the podium in Jesus' name. And after that, the introduction of the speaker by our beautiful sister, Sister Tillman, and then a selection from our beautiful beloved sisters back here behind me, the Mount Zion Baptist Church Women's Choir. In that order, we give you all the glory on and praise, Father God. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Jones, ministers on the, in the church here and out there, and our Mount Zion family. Thank you, women, for asking me to be a part of the program today. I appreciate that. Um, at this time, what I want to do in my task is to pay tribute to those who are not here with us today. They have gone on, but they will be in our hearts forever. It could be a mom, a sister, a aunt, a grandmother, a teacher, a preacher, a cousin, or just a good friend. So as I read these few words, I want you to think about these women. Someone has touched someone's heart and left a lasting impression. A heart of gold has stopped beating. Working hands are at rest. God broke our heart to prove that he only takes the best. Leaves and flowers may wither. The golden sun may set. But the hearts of those we love dearly, we will never forget. Let us bow our heads for a moment of silence. Amen. Amen. And let us all look forward to being one of these women that touch someone's heart. So when the time comes, we'll be on someone's memory as well. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mount Zion giving honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to the greatest pastor in the world, Pastor Jones, for, for giving me the opportunity to be on the program to introduce our guest speaker for today. Reverend Velvet L. Abrams is a native of Alexandria, Virginia. She is the eldest of four children born to Earl and Virginia Bird. At the age of eight, she accepted Christ as a 
her Lord as her Savior and was baptized at the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia by Pastor Austin A. Booker. She, she was licensed to preach the gospel in 1999 and ordained in 2005 by pastor and founder Johnny L. Abrams the Har at the Harvest Assembly Baptist Church, Alexandria, Virginia. Previously, she worked in the field of education as a school-based technology assistant and music teacher in the public and private Christian school arenas. Reverend Velvet Abrams is a graduate from George Mason University with a bachelor's degree in communication and has pursued graduate studies at Lancaster Bible, Bible College, Capital Bible, Bible Seminary. She is a peer support specialist and a past president of the Mount Vernon Rotary Club. Reverend Abrams' love for children has spanned the entire life of Harvest Assembly and has served not only as a mentor to them but also been looked upon as a surrogate mother and positive role model. She previously served as director of the Target Teen Ministry at Harvest, which gave teenagers a safe form to understand how to apply the principles of God's word to their daily lives and the challenge of their, fa their faces they face. Reverend Abrams has served in the music ministry in several capacities directing the children, teens, and evangelistic choirs. Reverend Abrams served as the Wednesday noon day Bible study facilitator and serves as ex officer head of the Women's Assembly, challenging and encouraging the women of Harvest to live their lives daily as unto Jesus Christ. Since the planning of Harvest Assembly Baptist Church, Reverend Abrams has been a dedicated leader with a love for the people of God. She works tirelessly besides her husband, teaching and leading, preaching and encouraging the body of Christ. In October of 2006, she serviced, her service was counted worthy of evaluation and appointment to the position of assistant pastor. The meditation of her heart is found in Psalms 27, 4. One thing I have, one thing I have desired of the Lord that will seek, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Mount Zion, you know what we do here. Now, you know what we do. I don't know if I can do it like Reverend Mickens, but I want all of Mount Zion to extend your right hand towards Reverend Abrams and say, Reverend Abrams, Reverend Abrams, Reverend Abrams, Reverend Abrams, Reverend Abrams preach, the preach the word. We need a word. We need a word. And if you preach the word, preach the word. We, will we will say amen. Thank you.
for all you've done, for all that you've done for me. For all that you've done, for all you've done for me. For me. All that you've done for me. I want to say all thank you for all you've done.
bless you, God. We magnify you. We glorify you. Thank you. just to wake me up this morning. But God had to touch this whole body from a state near death. Wake me up this morning and start me on my way. With the activity of my limbs, may not always feel up to par. But his grace and his mercy, not only my body, but it's a blessing to be in your right mind. Oh, glory to God. Glory be to God. So for this, we say, I say. is an assignment and I'd like to say good morning to everyone and I do give honor to God for this opportunity I don't take it lightly pastor 
to Pastor Dr. Jones and First Lady Deaconess Jones in her absence, amen. Deaconess Randall, members of the clergy, amen. Members, saints, and friends, it's good for us to be gathered together in the presence of the Lord. And last but not least, I'd also like to honor my pastor, amen, and husband here on today, the Reverend Dr. Johnny L. Abram. Amen. Now, I come not prepared to be before you long, for the Spirit of the Lord has tarried in this place. And we've been honored by the songs, the scripture, and this awesome worship leader, amen setting the atmosphere in the word of God that we come here to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So as we look to the word of God, I ask that you would rise to your feet. We're going to be looking at a few verses from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians 10, and we'll begin reading from the 31st verse and I'll be reading to you from the NIV version. When you have it, you can say amen or I'm there. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Just for a moment, I'd like to talk from your theme, working for God's glory. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Recently, I was led and decided to pursue a certificate program of study. Uh, this program I felt would be helpful in ministry and as I work with people. Amen. As I spoke with Reverend Tillman and she shared with me about her work in Fairfax County. I thought, God, this might be confirmation here. The line of study had to do with substance abuse and mental health. And I know we know Jesus, and he is enough. But sometimes it's also good to look at ministry from different, different aspects, amen. Because the word of God tells us that God gives us many things. He gives us teachers, he gives us preachers, he gives us pastors, amen. And, and truly he gives us doctors and he gives us lawyers, amen. All of these things for the edification of the body of Christ. Now this program is being subsidized by a grant. So I found myself having to go through the process of a multi-person interview just as one would for employment. Now, it has been some years since I've interviewed for a job. And if my husband tells it right, he will. I don't hold down one long. I get bored about three years and I'm done. Bless the Lord God. We dated past three years. I said, he must be the one. <laughs> Amen. But if you've ever applied for a job, you are aware or would be wise to take some time to prepare for the interview in hopes to gain subsequent employment. Am I right? It would be wise in preparation to study and know something about the employer. Study the history of the company. Know, know something about the CEO and where he went to school, where, amen, he studied, amen, what, what his interest is, what, what his calling might be, and know the company's vision and mission. Now, over the church, the CEO is 
the pastor. Am I right about it? And, 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 and the mission of the church might read something like this. To equip the Christians with the tools needed. Y'all seem to, to evangelize. To witness and spread the gospel of Christ. Or, or maybe you might have heard something about this. To empower Christians through the word of God to live holy, healthy, spirit-filled lives to the glory of God. And th this was the part of the mission that I like, to provide a family-centered ministry and a community-focused outreach. How many know that if you have strong families, you've got a strong church? Mm -hmm. Strong church, amen, you have a strong community. Amen. And, and with the desire to heal the hurting and provide relief to those that are suffering. Mount Zion, I believe you may know something about this mission. In the work of the kingdom, God is creator and CEO. There's no one above him. There's no one below him. The kingdom's mission is found inherently in the Great Commission. Some of you may recall the words of Jesus when he said, Go ye into all the worlds. Amen. Making disciples, we must be about our Father's business. Jesus said, Go, teach, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom's mission. Now, if we come for any other reason, amen, we're out of the mission, amen. The church is not a social club, amen, although we like to socialize, amen. It, it, it's not a restaurant for Lord knows we like to eat, but the mission of the church is to make disciples. And the character of the kingdom is that of a child. Did not Jesus tell us, suffer the children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Children have a certain innocence, amen, they're, they're trusting, amen, and even if they have a falling out, it doesn't last very long, amen. They're right back together to play with one another. That is the character of the kingdom, and the kingdom belongs to those who are poor in spirit, those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Not, 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 it doesn't belong necessarily to those with the degrees or the, or the fine cars or the five bedroom homes or a closet full of shoes with the outfits that match. No, the Bible says it's to those that are poor in spirit, amen. In other words, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness for it is those who shall be fed amen those that are persecuted for standing for the right in the midst of a world filled with wrong we, we need to know about the company no, know something about it as you are working for God's glory amen and now only should you prepare for the interview this way but you need to dress for success you, you need to dress appropriately for the interview. You can't go to the interview dress any old kind of way. Amen. I, I found myself sitting in front of a Zoom interview. A Zoom interview. In a nice blouse. A skirt and shoes. And later thinking, they only saw my face. But I was dressed. For the interview, it's about integrity, amen. Ephesians 6 tells us how to work and how to dress for kingdom work. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. You're going to need a belt. Amen. Don't have nobody sagging with your pants going to a... You're going to need the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet ready, not with Stacey Adams. Not, not with no red bottoms, but your feet shod with the gospel of peace and the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and the word of God. 
Somebody say dress for success. Salvation is the key to kingdom work. You can't do God's work and not be saved. You, you can't do the work of God and not have the love of God and for his people. So salvation is key. And then once you have the job, y'all know sometimes we get real lax. We get the job. Lord, I prayed for this job. Lord, I thank you for this job. And not a week later, Lord, I'm so tired of this job. This folk getting on my nerves up in here, up in here. But, but, but Romans 12 and 11 tells us, never be lacking zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor in serving the Lord. Is anybody excited about the work that God has called you to do? Or, or is anybody here like Caleb, amen, that you're still able to take this mountain knowing that the Lord is with you? Sometimes I might get a little tired, but I'm still able as long as I've got breath in this body. I made a vow to the Lord and I will not take it back. I told him I'm going all the way. Sometimes I may not always feel like running through troops and leaping all the walls, but I'm going anyhow. And I just need one or two witnesses. Is the work of the Lord still like fire? Shut up in your bones. Do you still feel like praising him? Anybody feel like working for the Lord to the glory of God? Tell somebody I'm working for the glory of God. Now, 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 now. You got to be mindful of some things. The Bible says as we look at our text, whatever you do, Look at somebody say, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Beloved, we live in a time of political correctness. A time of, if it feels right, do it. I'm living my life. Well, I'm living my best life. Old school songwriter said, it's your thing. Y'all heard this before. And another simply said, I'm just doing me. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a need for good mental and physical self-care. But the world's ideology that we live life solely unto ourselves, for ourselves, with no regard to anybody else is flagrantly flawed. The Apostle Paul in his letter to Corinth dealt with our religious freedoms in the context of being considerate to others. Look, 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 look back with me. And he says, if an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go eat, eat, go. Eat whatever is put before you without raising questions of con conscience. In other words, don't ask, just pray and eat. That's my kind of eating. He says, but if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat, both for the sake of the one who told you and for the sake of conscience. He says, I'm referring to the other person's conscience, not yours. For why is my freedom being judged by another's conscience if I take part in the meal with thankfulness? Why am I denounced? Because of something I thank God for. You, you see, eating and fellowship were a part of Jewish and pagan and the disciples and Christian culture. I know I'm right about it. We, even we as Christians, we participate in eating of the bread and drinking of the wine and communion as unto Christ. But the Apostle Paul ta taught that while we are considerate of others, we are not to do anything in direct violation of the scriptures. Now I can stop right there for a minute. You, you see the priest would offer sacrifices 
and eat the meat from the sacrifice, symbolizing unity, amen, and, and oneness with God. And so likewise, to knowingly eat meat used in pagan rituals would cause one to be viewed as corrupt by association. But the Bible tells us to do whatever you do to the glory of God. Amen. And political correctness, amen, they want a stamp of approval on any and everything. But by the grace of God I live, and by the grace of God I die, everything is not okay. Am I right about it? But that which I do, I'll do it to glorify God. I don't mean to offend you. Hallelujah. And you can do whatever you want to do. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, do it all for the glory of God. We've got to realize that we're not working for ourselves. We're employed for kingdom work. Colossians 3 and 23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. That's why I can't get tired and I can't quit. I, I just have to keep it moving. Sometimes I might have to do like Elijah. I might have to go and sit down by the brook. Amen. And, and let, let the raven feed me for a while. I might have to sit down and get a drink of water. I, I might even need a nap. But I can't quit because I know who I'm working for. Amen. I've got to keep moving. And Philippians 2, 14 through 15 tells me to do everything without grumbling. And without arguing. I ain't never seen so many grumbling folks in my, not here. Not over here, Pastor. Not, not, not in Mount Zion. But I know some folk, amen, they complain about every little thing. If they ain't complaining, they criticizing. If it ain't that, they condescending somebody else's work. If you tired, get out of the way. To do it without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then, I like this part right here, then you will shine. I, I like your thing, black and bling. Woman, y'all shining up in here on today. Shine like the stars in the sky because we're doing kingdom work. God is our CEO. And I thank God that the Holy Ghost is your immediate supervisor. How many thank God for the Holy Ghost? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, he said, do your work in a diligent and excellent manner. Whatever you find for your hands to do, do it with all your might. And Paul further said, I'm not seeking my own good, but for the good of many, so that they may be saved. Colossians 4 and 6 tells us, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. And beloved, that's important. People are hurting, amen. And people in this season, this generation, this dispensation are confused. Amen. So many religions, amen, out there. Folk have gone through so many traumas in their lives and they don't even know which way is up. The church seems like it's experienced a falling away. Hallelujah. After COVID, I didn't know what was going on. Amen. Folk didn't want to come back to church. Some of the same ones that would be shouting every Sunday. We see them in the street and they say, Pastor, I can't wait until the church opens back back up and as soon as the doors are open we ain't seen near one of them we're living in a strange time amen but people need the Lord that's why we've got to make sure that our speech is seasoned with salt because if ever we needed the Lord we sure do need them now Hallelujah. We need someone to come and know the King of Kings, the one who is the lover of our soul. Look at somebody say, you got to know how to talk to people. Talk to them in love. In love. My pastor tells me all the time, he said, the truth going to hurt all the time. Hallelujah. But so you might as well tell it to them in love because they ain't going to like it anyway. 
Ha le du ya. I remember Paul. And I'm almost through it. When he was in jail. Amen. He knew how to talk to people. The jailer was ready to take his own life. But the Lord brought them through. So much so that the jailer and his whole household ended up getting saved. The jailer brought Paul and them to the house and he set a meal before him. And the house was filled with joy because the man of God knew how to minister even to his oppressor beloved sometimes god will call you to speak to them to preach to them to help them to hold them the very ones hallelujah that said you wasn't gonna be nothing you weren't gonna do nothing hallelujah that what good could come out of you the ones hallelujah holding you in bondage knew though that they can help you but refuse to do so god will call you so that not only them but their whole household will be saved because of the love of Christ and the work of God in your life so if you run into trouble and I'm getting ready to take my seat if you run into trouble just remember that the head of the human resource department on your job is Jesus the Christ and he has provided everything that you need I remember what he told Joshua he said have I not commanded you be strong and do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go so beloved whether you're working whether you're eating whether you're hanging out with friends or any other type of activity is vital to keep the Lord in mind when cleaning your daily activities so ushers ushered to the glory of God singers and y'all did real good today sing to the glory of God saints we ought to pray we need to reach and teach people to the glory of God and first Peter 4 11 says if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of God if any man minister let him do it as it is of the ability which God gives him that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus we're here to glorify God to whom we praise and dominion forever and ever amen in other words Paul was saying preachers preach the gospel to the glory of God preach it in season and preach it out of season preach for we are servants who must be about our father's business I'm working not for myself but that others might be saved I'm working for a well done what are you working for some work for a paycheck but I found out that money can get funny some work for applause but I found out folk are fickle people will shout Hosanna one day and crucify you the next hallelujah some work for power but how many know that giants they do fall some work because they got a big ego oh, but my Bible tells me that pride coming before a fall some are working for the weekend but then they have to get back up and do it all again but as for me and mine I'm working for a well done I'm working to hear him say well done well done that good and faithful servant I receive an inheritance from the Lord as my reward I'm working for a crown with many a gem it's the Lord that I'm serving keep on working keep on working payday is coming out the wild keep on working keep on working and if when you give the best of your service done this whole world that the Savior has come be not dismayed hallelujah 
when men don't believe you he'll understand it better he'll understand it better we'll understand it better by and by he's gonna say well done oh oh when i come to the end of my journey we're in life and the battle is won carrying the staff and the cross of redemption he'll understand and say well done i'm working for a well done i want to be ready when jesus come said i want to be ready when jesus come because one day he's gonna crack the sky and the dead and christ shall rise i want to be ready when jesus come so mount zion fare you well keep on working keep on working when it's hot work when it's cold work when it feels good work when it don't feel good work keep on working till you hear him say well done my good and faithful servant come on up come on up come on up It's going to be all right, because payday is coming after a while. God bless you. said, you know what? I've been through a lot and God has kept me. I worked for a lot of employers and Lord knows God kept me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this day, I want to make sure that my work, my allegiance is with the Lord. If that's you, won't you come? Jesus, won't you come? He's waiting for Profession of faith in Jesus. Come, to come out that or back to Jesus. Is there one? Can't you hear him? Calling you. Are there any others? Anyone else? Hallelujah. 
come to Jesus. Today is your day. Today is your day. It's still time. It's still time. Come to Jesus. He'll show you the way. He will show. your hands together. You've got some praise all over this place. The Bible said whatever we do, do it to the glory and the honor of God. Wonder who do we have here today? Officers, members, and friends, please stand. We have Brother Ivy Page and his lovely wife, Kashika Page. They're joining Mount Zion by way of Christian experience. Amen. Pastor, we met with these beautiful people, and they have meet all the requirements. God bless you. Y'all may be seated. Brother Hayes, last name Page. 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 All right. Come, darling. Wonderful honor to have both of you of all the churches in Prince William County. It's just an honor you chose our church. We are, we are elated to welcome you here. And you know what? You can be a blessing to us as much as we can be a blessing to you. So thank you for coming. And uh, want you see Brother Curry? Brother Curry. After church and that's some information that he's going to receive from you from us. But thank you so much. May God bless you. And we're looking to work together as Christians in Christ. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. 
truly we give the Father God all the glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. We thank the Father God. We thank the Father God for our dear sister. Whatever we do, do it for the glory and honor of God. Hallelujah. The word of God in Isaiah 52 says, How beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring the good news, who proclaim peace, and who proclaim salvation, and who say to Zion, Your God reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So may the word of God, may the spirit of the living God take the word of God that we have heard in our hearing today and may he seal it in our hearts until the day of redemption. And may he move his word from information to revelation to transformation in each one of our lives for the glory of God, for the upbuilding of his kingdom. In Jesus' name, God bless you, beautiful sister. Thank you so very much. Now we move forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God says give and it, it shall be given unto you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time to give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just come forth.
What a wonderful day. What a wonderful day. Such a privilege to be in the house of the Lord always. And this day is a privilege to be here because a mighty word went forth. Uh, to God be the glory for the marvelous things that he has done, is doing, and will continue to do in our lives. Today is Women's Day, and I promise you, black and bling just simply seems, means shine black, bright like a diamond. You know it. You know it. Shine bright. Not in yourself, not in your own doing, but in your work for the glory of the Lord. And that's really simply it. I just really want to thank you all for your participation today, whether you clap, whether you sang, whether you ushered, whether you served, whether you smiled. Whatever you did on this day, we just want to say thank you. And we really want to give a huge shout out and applause to the greatest pastor in the whole wide world, the Reverend Dr. Alfred Jones Jr. He allows us to do this. And even better than that, if we can give an even greater applause to the First Lady Goldie Jones in her absence, that she is simply, utterly amazing. And Miss Jones, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. We know you're the true leadership of this, this branch of John and these women. Well, my task as the Women's Fellowship President is simply to say, didn't we have a word preached to us today? A word of conviction, a word of correction, a word of charge. That whatever we do for, that whatever we do, it doesn't matter what we do, we do it for the work of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, right? So, it is my privilege, Reverend Abrams, just to present you with this token of love to say the women of Mount Zion simply thank you for that mighty word. Amen? Amen. Steal this mic. Didn't our worship leader lead today? Yeah. Hey, thank you, Brenda. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Let the church say amen. Let us say it again. We certainly want to thank every person that have been a part of this program and this service today. Truly, we want to thank. Uh, I want to thank my daughter for. Amen. For, presiding so wonderfully today and God knows we thank God for that word today I, uh, our preacher the, the only time I heard her I heard her online so that that goes to show you that some time you don't know who looking at you or who watching or what you're saying that whatever you say online you ought to be doing it to the glory and honor of God and so I saw her online and I knew her husband I've been knowing him for a long time we go way back and uh, but truly she had brought us a word today thank our women our women I'm not going to take the time to call them by name, but they did a marvelous job. All of the women, our choir, ushers, and everybody. We're certainly happy to have in our, in our midst of Reverend Abram, the pastor of Harvest in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. He's the husband of Reverend uh, Abram. I'm going to have him to just say a word. He, said he had never been here uh, before in worship service. So I'm just glad. Come say good morning to us. And we're going to Can we honor the greatest pastor in this whole wide world? Amen. My friend, come on, come on. Dr. Alfred Jones, thank you. Amen. Really, 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 my Zion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this real briefly. I'm going to sit down. Uh, one of the things I want, want, to, want to say here, just in summary, because I could really be here for a minute, but I can tell you, if I was not a member of 
Ebenezer and Alexandria. I'm about to just join up in here today. Come on. Here. I love your spirit. Amen. Amen. We just felt just so much at home. Amen. Amen. One more time. Didn't my wife preach a word up in here today? Come on. Come on. Amen. And um, as I take my seat, Pastor, and uh, he and I, um, as he said, that uh, we go back a long ways, a long ways, and, and uh, decades, a long ways. And Pastor, some um, years or so ago, uh, there's a, a deacon at a church in Washington, D.C., and you know, sometimes when you've been in fellowship with, uh, with someone for a long period of time, those are expressions that we say, we go back a long ways, right? And I told this deacon that, I said, you know what, we go back a long ways. You know what he said? And I'm saying this to Pastor here. I hope we got a long way still to go. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Avon, for being with us today. I know everybody has enjoyed himself today. We have had a blessed uh, time and want to thank this preaching lady out there. Wow. She reminds me of her husband. I'm sure she's been watching you, Doc, and, and she's been taking uh, lessons from you and uh, because she preached like you. And this, this, this man, oh my God, he's from South Carolina. And, uh, and uh, we... He really know how to preach. So God bless all of you. We're certainly happy to have in our midst today uh, one of our trustees, Sister Vivian, and uh, her husband have come all the way from South Carolina to be with us. Where are they? Just stand. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. She was a member of our church, and she moved to South Carolina. The guy came here and murdered her and took her to South Carolina. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to be careful of the guys who come in and want to learn my... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give them a quiz. Make sure they don't take them out of here. Amen. But we're so happy to have them today. God bless you. Let's give our ladies a great big hand. God bless you. God bless you. Now we are on our way to uh, Mount Zion in Fredericksburg. Amen. Get down there time enough. They want to feed you. And so those of you that are going, your uh, choir will accomplish us. And certainly we have enjoyed it. So we're going to ask now that everybody stand. And we'll get ready to go. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your presence here today. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears are hearing. God, we thank you for your word today, reminding us that whatever we do, whether it is little or large, that we should do it for the glory of God. And now may the grace of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. And let us all say. Have a great day in the Lord. God bless you.